All right, guys, today we're going to be addressing a comment that I get a lot from different people that watch my several very positive Gerber strong arm videos. Now, undoubtedly, as far as Gerber goes, I've said a lot of negative things about them, and that's because I've had a lot of negative experiences with my different Gerbers throughout the time. Now, luckily, I've sold most of the Gerbers I own. The only one I haven't sold is my Gerber LMF2, and that's because it's physically broken, and I don't feel like it's right to sell that to someone. But today, we're going to be talking about the Gerber strong arm in addressing the criticism. And unfortunately, I actually sold my Gerber strong arm just because I didn't like it, but I do have this little Allegheny Bushcrafter, and so this will be the the knife porn reference for today. So at least you guys can look at something sharp while I am clarifying myself. Now, I get a lot of comments talking about a specific YouTuber by the name of Joe X, and I've watched some of his content, and I don't think that he's a bad guy at all. Um, in fact, he kind of operates in a niche that I think is important in the knife community, and that is sheer destruction tests. And in fact, I kind of wish there were more YouTubers out there that would literally build rigs just to destroy knives. Admittedly, it is expensive and hard to, you know, continually find stuff to destroy with knives to test their sheer strength. So I get it's not attainable. But anyway, so Joe X did a video or has done many videos comparing the different knives that I've talked about, things like the BK-18, the uh, SRK, the strong arm. And it seems that many people have been confused and came to the conclusion that the only thing a knife is good for is being a sharpened pry bar. And this is because I get so many comments saying, but you're wrong because the Gerber strong arm is the strongest knife that he's ever tested. And he, he, most of these commenters aren't absolutely wrong. The strong arm is an incredibly strong knife and it is stronger than the SRK, stronger than the BK-18, stronger than many other knives. But in all of my videos, I've never come out and said that the strong arm was particularly weak. Uh, I did say things that like I didn't like its ergonomics and I feel like the handle was too thin, but I never said that the knife was weak or that it wouldn't last against hard um, hard use, but I think what I tried to articulate that wasn't well understood in many of my videos was the fact that a knife itself is more than just, at least in my opinion, apparently, a knife is better than just, or a knife is more than just a sharpened pry bar. And when I look at the strong arm, I take other things into a, a into mind. I think of, once again, ergonomics. I think of the blade shape, the blade material, and the overall usability of the tool. Now, once again, if you want a sharpened pry bar, the strong arm is a good sharpened pry bar, but I didn't come out and say that this is a bad sharpened pry bar. I said, it's not a great knife, and I think that it's overpriced. That was the core of my message. And once again, I said it was a bad knife. Now, the reason why I said that is, once again, I don't feel things like the ergonomics were very hand-filling or very comfortable, being that it had a top guard on the handle. It was not easy to choke up onto and do fine, skilled tasks like a knife. And so, once again, when you look at the, you know, strong arm from the perspective of a sharpened pry bar, it's not a half bad tool as a sharpened pry bar. But when it comes to the knife side of it, I don't think that 420HC is a particularly good knife steel because it does not hold a keen edge as long as, say, 01 tool steel, 1095 high carbon, SK5 high carbon, and other steels that I compared in previous videos. So I think it's important, I mean, like even 14C28N would have been a better choice as a stainless steel for a knife. Now, once again, if you want to have a debate or commentary on whether or not the strong arm is a good sharpened pry bar, I would recommend checking out Joe X's videos on the strong arm because it does take an incredible amount of energy and overall abuse to finally get the sharpened pry bar to break. However, once again, when we evaluate a knife from the standpoint of a knife and not a sharpened pry bar, you begin to find that maybe it's really not the best tool. Or maybe Gerber's just upset with me and has sent 
and has sent a bunch of fanboys my way to tell me that I'm wrong. Now, once again, I'm not going to apologize in this video because I don't think that any of my assessments of the strong arm were wrong. Once again, I bought all of my Gerbers with my own personal money and have actually sold off all of my non-broken Gerbers for money. And that's just the way it is. I don't really love Gerber's products. They don't excite me. Um, in Overall, most of the time, there's glaring inaccuracies, flaws, or just failures in most of their tools. And luckily, the strong arm seems to be the one that has bucked the curve for failure as a sharpened pry bar. But once again, using inadequate blade steel in this day and age really is no excuse. And as I've mentioned in other videos relating to knife steel, saying, is knife steel overrated? I will say, and I will concede, that in most cases, things like 420HC are probably totally usable steels. However, in this day and age, the reason why knife companies have made the shift to better quality steels, or at least steels that perform at a higher level, is because it offers the end user more value. Once again, I'm not upset if Gerber wants to charge, let's say $150 for their strong arm. However, I would be upset or at least uninterested if they had a 420HC blade on that $150 pry bar or strong arm, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, in, in the ultimate reason why is value. It all goes back to value. If you simply want to use the knife as a sharpened pry bar, I'm sure it's a good value. But if you want to use it as a knife, you want better blade steel that is going to hold an edge longer, be easy to resharpen, which luckily it is that, and you know, have a number of good characteristics to it. In addition, you want a knife that is comfortable to hold for multiple hours or on and off as you're building different survival traps or prying yourself out of a a or prying yourself out of the plane that just crashed that you're in right so these are the basic kind of essentials to really having a knife and not just a sharpened pry bar sheer durability is not the only thing i look at when i look at knives and once again i've led many conversations with the disclaimer that things like this uh the cold steel srk are not the end all to be all for strength however i've also talked about in other videos how strength is all relative to the task at hand. Once again, if your SRK fails while prying a piece of cement from the ground, is that a realistic use that you will ever do? Probably not. You're probably not going to go around prying up concrete slabs out of the earth. It's just not a very realistic thing for most knife users. So therefore, it goes back to, can this knife hold up to reasonably durable use or reasonably hard use in actual applications? Can I go baton a tree down with this knife? And if the answer is yes, then that's realistically as durable as I need it. If I can't pry up concrete slabs with it, I don't actually care because I'm not going to be doing that, right? I'm not going to be moving boulders with my knife. I'm not going to be doing ridiculously insane things out in the real world. Now, going back to Joe X, I don't think that his videos are bad. Once again, I, I've watched a number of them and he's doing his tests in sheer durability just to see for an edu edutainment type of purpose what the upper limit of these knives are. And so it's, it's a valuable thing to know just how durable your blade is. But once again, so long as I can go out and do reasonably hard tasks with this thing and it performs and it doesn't break, then that's good enough for me. So then I begin to worry about other things like, is it good at edge retention? How can I resharpen it? How corrosion resistant is the steel? How good are the ergonomics? Can I choke up on the blade? Can I really get on that cutting edge? Can I feather stick with it? Can I do all of the tasks that I need to do in survival? Because once again, <clears throat> because once again, you know, being able to cut through a car door is cool, but I'm probably not going to do that in a real survival situation. I'm more worried about building a shelter, starting a fire and not dying. So while part of me is sad that I have to make a video like this to clarify to such a degree of what I actually mean in my videos, my anti-Gerber videos, it's really this core. Even when it, I talk about other knives like the Gerber Principle and other Gerber products, the primary thing I'm hating about these knives is their low value that they offer customers. If you want to go out and spend your hard-earned dollars on a knife that is actively not worth the price that you're paying, 
be my guest, man. Do it. I don't really care. I'm not going to lose any sleep over you buying a knife that isn't worth what you're buying it at. I'm just trying to help most of my viewers, subscribers, and people that like the channel make informed decisions about gear products and overall my testing and experience of evaluating things, okay? So that's ultimately at the core of what I'm doing. Anyways, guys, this has already been too long. As always, God bless, and I'm out.